Viewer discretion is advised. The rules of Russian roulette are actually quite simple. You take a gun, you pop out all the bullets but one, spin the chamber, and then the gun is passed from person to person, each one putting it to their head, pulling the trigger, and with each click and no gun going off, that means that the next person now has worse odds, and so each time the trigger is pulled, the chances of the gun going off and killing the person rise. This is one of the deadliest games ever conceived of. Your best odds are, are five out of six that you're going to survive. With each pull of the trigger, the laws of probability indicate that it gets more likely that there's going to be a fatal shot. So the first person that pulls the trigger has a 16.7% chance of killing themselves. The next person, it's 20%. The next person, it's 25%, on up to 100%. The origins of this dangerous game are murky at best. The legend of Russian roulette is that it originates in 19th century Russian prisons, where sadistic prison guards forced prisoners to play Russian roulette. But the historical record indicates that there's very little evidence for any of this. The first real description that we come across about Russian roulette comes from the 1840 novel The Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Lermontov. In the final chapter, the two characters place a bet about whether or not free will or fate exists. So to prove that there is fate, one of them picks up a pistol, aims it at his temple, and presses the trigger. But nothing happens. He then takes the gun and he aims it up at the ceiling, and this time a bullet actually hits the ceiling, thus proving that fate is real. Lermontov's novel ties Russia as the birthplace of this dark concept. But in the 20th century, the term Russian roulette becomes part of global pop culture, sometimes with lethal consequences. Austin, Texas, 1938. At a party to celebrate his 21st birthday, Thomas H. Markley, plays a fatal game of chance. Thomas Markley, a young Texan with a bright future ahead of him, he's recently uh, pushed through university, uh, gotten his education. On his 21st birthday, he plays Russian roulette and he loses. That's the first death in the United States from Russian roulette. Markley's tragic death occurs only one year after the term Russian roulette is coined by writer George Surdez in a work of pulp fiction. George Surdez, in an article for Collier's Magazine in 1937, actually uses the phrase Russian roulette to describe exactly what we today think of as Russian roulette. Even the Oxford English Dictionary cites that as the first example of the use of that phrase. Before long, the game catches on, attracting some now famous players. Malcolm X is well known for his contributions to the civil rights movement. On his path to coming to some of those ideas, though, was a darker phase, the phase that took him ultimately to jail. Part of what led him to jail was a burglary ring that he participated in and kind of ran. Malcolm X wanted to impress his fellow burglars. He wanted them to know that he was one hell of a strong guy, that he would take risks. And he used to say that he had played Russian roulette. He describes this in his autobiography. He mentions using Russian roulette as a way to demonstrate his prowess, his dominance. So he picks up the gun, gives it a spin, puts it up to his head, pulls the trigger, nothing. And then he does it again. And again, and of course, every single time he's doing it, that cylinder is clicking away. So th those who are watching, they're sure that you know, death is just around the corner. What they don't know is that he's actually palmed the round. Rather than actually loading it in the gun, he took the bullet and he put it into the palm of his hand. So he was in no danger. But had the bullet actually been in there, he would have been. From there, Russian roulette takes hold in the entertainment industry. So in 1954, it was reported that Johnny Ace, uh, a blues musician, celebrated, brilliant musician, he decides to give Russian roulette a go, and he loses. Freddie Prince in the 1970s, at that point, he's a young 20-something comedian, and he plays it frequently. He doesn't think much of it. He'll call his friends, kind of laugh about it. He plays it in front of his manager, spins the cylinder, goes for it. 
While Prinz eventually dies from a self-inflicted gunshot wound on January 29, 1977, it's not from Russian roulette. But perhaps the most famous example of Russian roulette is fictional. Hollywood films over several decades glamorized it. It's what made it seem like a, a way to demonstrate manliness, bravado, in a, an extremely unhealthy, dangerous way. The game plays a major part in the 1979 Oscar winner for Best Picture, The Deer Hunter. Starring Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, and Meryl Streep, the film uses Russian roulette as a metaphor for soldiers fighting in the Vietnam War. The Deer Hunter uses Russian roulette to great effect and to frightening effect. It's always been a kind of desperate resort for people who felt so downfallen that they didn't want to live and wanted to see if they could take a chance and go. But it's also been seen as a way of testing your will, of proving really whether you cared enough to continue playing or not. These fictitious accounts keep this adrenaline-fueled deadly game alive in the popular imagination with lethal consequences. It's common to have copycat crimes. And I think when Russian roulette is popular in the culture and people are talking about it, somebody's going to be tempted to try to do that particular act because we'll always have bored and depressed and anxious and desperate people. If more than a thousand Americans have died since the 1940s playing this game, that's very serious. 